For decades, Dan seemed like he was untouchable. I worked with an incredibly emotionally abusive producer. I did not feel safe around Dan Schneider while I was working at Nickelodeon. In recent days, the earthquake that was quiet on set, the dark side of kids' TV, shattered the idyllic image of children's television, leaving viewers grappling with a horrifying reality. This wasn't a mere expose, it was a cultural bombshell. I've been waiting 17 years for today. Detonating a long suppressed history of abuse, exploitation, and systemic dysfunction that had festered for years beneath the bright lights and infectious laughter of beloved Nickelodeon shows from the 90s and 2000s. At the epicenter stood Dan Schneider, the once celebrated creative force behind iconic shows like iCarly and The Amanda Show. While these programs were synonymous with childhood innocence, the behind the scenes reality painted a far darker picture. Former child stars, crew members, and parents bravely stepped forward their harrowing accounts weaving a chilling narrative of a culture gone wrong. Quiet on set unflinchingly exposed a web of fear, intimidation, and blatant disregard for the well-being of young performers. For me, all that was, uh, it was, it was my first time being exposed to Hollywood and yeah. TV and stuff like that. And it was, it was a good time until it wasn't. And so we're running out there onto the set. The set had a bunch of beams going across it. And because I'm wearing a wig that has, has uh, bangs, I couldn't see the beam that was going oh across. Gosh. And so I'm running top speed and I knocked myself out on the set of all that. <laughs> Here's the part that I have a problem with now that I'm an adult and I kind of get it. They had sent someone to the hospital to make me sign a bunch of stuff saying that, that it was my fault that they're not responsible. <gasps> Damn. So you they know, didn't wow, medical. So I didn't have anybody there. So it was it was one of those things where like, you got to sign, you know, because yeah. if you don't sign, you're not working no more. And I'm like, yeah, okay, okay I guess I'm signing. Sign it yeah. away. The shocking allegations that emerged were not whispers of misconduct. They were a thunderous indictment of an industry that prioritized profit over safety and dignity. The documentary laid bare a system where abuse and exploitation were not aberrations, but disturbingly normalized. This normalization had devastating consequences, hindering the emotional and psychological development of these young performers. Getting kicked off the show definitely was the stage setter for a lot of issues that I still face today as a black man in therapy. Uh, a lot of issues that I'm currently overcoming, but I feel like everything happens for a reason. Studies have shown that childhood abuse can lead to a cascade of negative effects, including anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and substance abuse. The potential impact on their self-esteem, trust in authority figures, and ability to form healthy relationships would reverberate throughout the years that followed. There is a proper club in Hollywood and they are all intertwined. I know people are gonna be like, oh, Alexa's is so wacky. People thought I was wacky a couple years ago, right? <laughs> and look what happens. One of the most powerful moments in the documentary came from Drake Bell, a former Nickelodeon star who shattered the deafening silence surrounding his own traumatic experiences. Bell, once ostracized, and still is by all accounts, for his own criminal activity involving minors, laid bare for the first time a compelling narrative that served as a rallying cry, igniting a long overdue conversation about accountability and justice within the entertainment community. Why don't you do this? Yeah. Why don't you think of the worst stuff that someone can do to somebody as sexual assault? And that'll answer your question. More importantly, it seeks to give a voice to countless other survivors who had suffered in silence for years, potentially fostering a sense of solidarity and empowering them to seek help. 
it honestly gives me PTSD. I'm watching this um, Quiet On Set documentary and it's talking about how integral and vital it is to create, especially when it's like a kid's cast, to create an environment where kids feel comfortable to say no, or I don't feel comfortable with this. And then I'm like, yeah, maybe they do express that though. It's also more important to create an environment that listens to the kids and actually does not make them do things when they don't want to do them because they made me kiss this 30 plus year old man when i was like what 14 15. the issues exposed by quiet on set weren't isolated incidents they were merely the tip of a very dark iceberg the documentary revealed the abuses as symptoms of deeper systemic failures within the child entertainment industry Hey, what's up? My name is Amber and I play Taylor Hathaway on Nickelodeon's The Haunted Hathaways. One of the horrifying things that happened in my experience with Nickelodeon was when Nickelodeon sent computers over to production when we were starting filming the show and when they were turned on, there was child porn on them and nobody was held accountable. There was no investigation, never even found out where it came from or who was responsible for it. It's beyond heartbreaking to know that a company that was employing children failed miserably at protecting them. The exploitation of young actors thrived in a culture of silence and complicity, a toxic environment not only harming individuals, but potentially eroding public trust in the industry as a whole. Casting directors, agents, and managers who failed to act on red flags could also face increased scrutiny. Industry award shows and professional organizations could play a role by refusing to recognize or celebrate the work of those accused of abuse. In the wake of the documentary's release, Nickelodeon scrambled to respond. Their statement expressing support for Bell and a commitment for creating a safe workplace environment was met with a healthy dose of skepticism. The Quiet On Set documentary explains how many worked with Dan Snyder at Nickelodeon. And right here are four different people that were charged with SA crimes against children that worked with Dan Snyder at Nickelodeon. I do not know and again literally cannot say if Dan ever hurt any of those children. I do know because he admitted though that he crossed lines, that he was sexist towards female employees, that he let this power get to his head, he acted inappropriately and he definitely did not pay enough attention to the harmful environment that he was fostering on all of those shows. The environment that Nickelodeon on a whole was fostering. And as I'm sure you guys know, that has not been a secret. This is just the first time that he's admitted it or even talked about it. Jeanette McCurdy wrote about this extensively in her book last year. Other actors have talked about it, those who did not sign the NDAs. I mean, when I was a child actor in the 2000s and in the 2010s, Dan Schneider being a creep was common knowledge that was talked about constantly. People knew, but now it's all fair game because he's admitted it. The documentary made it clear that simply acknowledging the problem was not enough. Nickelodeon needed to take concrete steps to investigate past allegations, implement robust safeguards to protect future talent, and potentially overhaul the entire talent management system. This could involve mandatory background checks, mandatory reporting of suspected abuse, and the creation of independent oversight bodies to ensure transparency and accountability. Parents might become more vigilant in scrutinizing contracts and working conditions before allowing their children to participate in productions. Unions representing child actors could also play a more active role in advocating for their safety and well-being. However, as the documentary made it clear, the road to justice would be long and fraught with challenges. Legal battles, potential settlements, and the sheer complexity of dismantling a deeply ingrained culture could all impede progress. Lawsuits for the victims could have significant financial repercussions for the network and that of its parent company, Paramount Global, potentially impacting future productions and programming. Public pressure and sustained media attention would be crucial in holding Nickelodeon and other studios accountable. The momentum generated by Quiet On Set has seemingly sparked a vital conversation about ensuring the safety and well-being of children in entertainment. I think it's a good thing that the doc is out and it's, you know, putting things, you know, on display that need to be, you know, stories that need to be told for this, you know, accountability's sake. Um, but it's definitely tough to watch because I have fond memories of that place, you know, and I have fond memories of, you know, my co-stars and stuff like that. So yeah. to hear that they've gone through terrible things like that is just, it's really tough. Um, 
We did reach out to Dan Schneider's team and they directed us to a response that he posted on YouTube. Um, we also reached out, of course, to the production company and they said that, you know, they investigate all of these things, um, investigate all of the allegations. Well, investigate um, more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, because it's like, you know, it's supposed to be a safe space, you know? It's supposed to be a safe place for kids. And like, to hear all about that is just like, how dare you, yeah. you know? Yeah. This outcry extended beyond public outrage and celebrity endorsements. It spurred calls for legislative changes and a comprehensive overhaul of how the industry protects its young talent. The documentary highlighted the need for independent watchdogs to monitor productions and ensure compliance with child safety regulations. These bodies could be composed of professionals with expertise in child psychology, social work, and legal matters. Quiet On Set exposed a culture where the voices of child actors were often silenced. A crucial reform could involve empowering young performers to speak up about their concerns and experiences without fear of retribution. This might involve establishing clear reporting mechanisms for abuse and creating safe spaces for them to voice their concerns. The lack of transparency surrounding working conditions for child actors was a major failing exposed by the documentary. Production companies could implement measures to increase transparency, such as clearly defined contracts, outlining work hours, rest periods, and expectations for conduct on set. The impact of Quiet On Set extends beyond the entertainment industry. It has sparked a broader conversation about the power dynamics at play when adults hold positions of authority over children. This awareness could lead to positive changes in areas like youth sports, education, and other settings where children interact with adults in positions of power. The documentary's influence has also reached the burgeoning world of family vlogging, where parents document their children's lives online. Parallels can be drawn between the potential exploitation exposed in Quiet On Set and the pressure placed on children in some family vlogs. Concerns include exploitation for views and ad revenue, where families prioritize generating content and attracting viewers over the well-being of their children. This could lead to pressuring children to perform or participate in activities that make them uncomfortable. There's no union in existence for digital media. If you're not uh, trained in and, and versed in social media platforms, a lot of us are unaware of how many direct and indirect revenue streams exist. So there are a lot of opportunities for the child to be monetized and think they're simply just posting a video. Lack of control and privacy for children who grow up in the spotlight of family vlogs may not have a say in how their image is portrayed online. This can have lasting consequences for their sense of identity and privacy. The commercialization of childhood in family blogs that heavily feature product placements or sponsorships can blur the line between genuine childhood experiences and commercial endorsements. This raises questions about whether children fully understand the implications of promoting products to a vast online audience. The legal landscape surrounding child exploitation in family vlogging is still evolving. However, Quiet On Set has served as a wake-up call prompting discussions about potential regulations and ethical considerations for families who share their lives online. Ex-Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider decided to speak out after accusations of inappropriate and abusive behavior were made against him. Schneider refuted the idea that he had complete control over the content that eventually made it onto his shows, saying, There were many, many levels of scrutiny pointing out executives from the company, crew members, parents, and other adults on set could have raised objections. We had executives in LA. We had executives in New York. Bosses, and then their bosses, and then their bosses. And they're approving all of this stuff. Okay. Okay? And we're also shooting it in front of all sorts of adults and caregivers and the set teacher and, and the families. Everybody's watching it. And if anybody had said anything, hey, we don't like that, that's not appropriate, you then it would have been cut out. Schneider also said that he was not responsible for hiring Brian Peck a dialogue coach who in 2004 was sentenced to 16 months in prison after pleading no contest to two counts of child SA. The thing about his interview as a whole is um, I just thought, I thought it was funny. <laughs> if I could be candid, Dan was an actor before all of this. Um, and so I think that he brushed off some chops and um, gave us a nice performance. Former Zoe 101 star, Alexa Nicholas, who was featured in the Quiet On Set docuseries, slammed the former producer's comments and said that she would have preferred a private apology instead of a public statement. 
I don't want to have to watch this. I would have so rather gotten a letter from you, for example, apologizing genuinely than having to like witness the whole world watching whenever the hell this is. In the wake of this docuseries, the landscape of children's television stands irrevocably altered. No longer can abuse and exploitation hide behind the guise of laughter and applause. The voice of survivors have shattered the silence, sparking a collective reckoning with the dark underbelly of an industry once revered for its innocence. It's a rallying cry for legislative reform, industry-wide accountability, and a cultural shift in how we perceive and prioritize the welfare of our youth. It's a testament to the resilience of survivors whose bravery has ignited a beacon of hope for a future where exploitation is met with justice and silence is replaced by solidarity. As we reflect on the revelations unearthed by Quiet Unsaid, let us not forget the profound responsibility we bear as guardians for the next generation. Let us pledge to stand vigilant against the shadows cast by exploitation and abuse and to nurture a world where every child's laughter is born from a place of safety, dignity, and unwavering respect. For in the end, it is not merely a documentary that we witness, but a call to reclaim the innocence lost, to forge a path toward a brighter and more compassionate future for generations to come. I am hoping that the impact sustains, and it's not just a flash in the pan of the interest, but there's real change that needs to occur, and I'm hoping this is a first stepping stone for that.